Hey guys and welcome to Film Study where we analyze films in various ways to make you see it in a different concept and change a part of a scene and figure out how the rest of the story would play out based on a single change in one scene. There's been an estimated number of about 500,000 films released since the very first known film called Round Hay Garden Scene. With all the new platforms like Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Netflix, who knows if this number is even counted towards the films that are released exclusively with those platforms. With my fascination with films, today I want to talk about the history of the first film ever created and why theories exist in the first place. To do that, we have to go way back to 1816. My intention was to create a theory of this film that I found, however, with further research, this is technically the world's earliest surviving motion picture film, showing actual consecutive action with a runtime of only 2.11 seconds. Now, of course, the theory cannot be made from this alone as it only shows four people outdoors in front of what looks to be a house with a structure that we can see of the windows taking a few steps. Filmed in the United Kingdom, this was the first glimpse of video footage known as stop motion, more so known today geared towards animation or claymation, and a newfound way of entertainment that would change everything. The camera was invented in stages from the 11th century to 1816, when the first partially successful photograph of a camera image was made. I did manage to find the first feature-length film running 100 minutes called The Corbett Fitzsimmons Fight, released in 1897. Directed by Enoch J. Rector, depicting the 1897 boxing match between James J. Corbett and Bob Fitzsimmons in Carson City, Nevada on St. Patrick's Day. It's reported that only pieces of this film is left and survived over the years. For an actual documentary film for this day and age, the film would have consisted of other clips and cuts in between composed to show the individuals in the boxing match like their lives and what led up to them deciding to do this fight. Now today this would be considered a televised boxing match instead of a documentary. Judging by the genre of this film, the definition of the documentary has changed a little over the years. In its infancy, film was rarely recognized as an art form by presenters or audiences, regarded by the upper class as a vulgar and, and lowbro film of cheap entertainment. Films often appealed to the working class and were often too short to hold any narrative potential. Now this is actually very surprising considering where we are now. It is one of the main forms of entertainment for many and the reason for so many jobs out there, considering more than 500 people can be assigned a crew member on one film alone, when back then technology and the ability to hire wasn't possible. At the time, it cost around $100,000 to put together a film. Today, that could be the cost just for one major movie actor to be in the film. Of all the films that were created in the late 1800s, there was one that stood out to me, the execution of Mary Stewart. It is a silent short film with great historical significance. It is notable for being the first film to use special effects during editing for obvious reasons. This 18 second short film developed in 1895. Moving films were shown to the public in the 1890s in Europe and North America by traveling exhibitors who set up in temporary spaces. One of the first commercial film successes was the American movie, The Great Train Robbery in 1903. This is what they called an actuality film, a non-fiction film genre that, like the documentary film, it uses footage of real events, places, and things. Unlike the documentaries, actuality films are not structured into a larger argument. The Great Train Robbery is what you would expect at this time, an American silent western film. In the years leading up to The Great Train Robbery, the film industry was marked by much innovation and variety. What I noticed with all of these films was there was no real creativity behind these films during these years. It wasn't until 1907 that companies began to sway away and produce fiction films with actors, broadening out new genres for consumers. Today, actuality films are no longer filmed. However, the form of home videos or footage of a real event could be called an actuality film. In 1902, a film categorized as science fiction was Le Voyage dans la Lune, telling the story of a spacecraft being launched to the moon in a large cannon. Doing further research, I've realized there's a lot of firsts when it comes to fiction genre films like Epic of Gilgamesh. Now, before I bore you with historical facts more than I already have about films dating centuries ago, the purpose of fiction is to entertain, but there's a dividing 
dividing line that may not always be clear. This would pertain to real people or events in it. It's called historical fiction, like Dunkirk or Hacksaw Ridge. The fascination I have with all of this is we started from writing, to filmmaking, to creative filmmaking, to theories. Theories in film began as early as the 1920s by questioning the formal essential attributes of motion pictures. It allows viewers to create their own stories based off of the facts and knowledge of that film or franchise, like the Pixar theory, and share with others representing a sense of creativity. And even one person who creates a theory, that one theory can be expanded into a thousand others based on how others see it or maybe there's been some misinformation about that story or a detail that was missed. Originally, theories developed as a sense of looking at one movie differently and challenging the story's layout. During World War II, a French film critic and theorist, André Bazin, was one of the first to challenge films. He believed that the purpose of art is to preserve reality. Today, when we create film theories, we are restructuring a concept of an already developed and final form of a film. For the Disney film Up, some believe that Carl had passed away in the beginning of the film and the entire trip was us watching him travel to the other side. Now this could have come to mind with when we see Carl and Ellie grow up together, so it makes sense to his passing because he was so attached to Ellie. Over the course of the next 100 years, more and more films came out with longer runtime and more creatively as technology and more people got involved in the creative team and development as a whole. The first fictional film arose with the film The Mirrors La Rosa Arose which was first screened at the Grand Café on December 28, 1895. The Lemire brothers were French manufacturers of photography equipment, best known for their cinematography motion picture system and the short films they produced between 1895 and 1905, which places them among the earliest filmmakers. A fictional film stems from a story that is not real and entirely creative when it comes to imagination. This film depicted a simple, practical joke in which a gardener is tormented by a boy who steps on the hose that the gardener is using to water plants, cutting off the water flow. Even though this situation could happen in real life and it's nothing too crazy, it made filmmakers develop a sense of creativity with films from there on out. I honestly think it's interesting to go back and see what it was like and how much more time it took to put all of these images together during the beginning stages of this portion of entertainment. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below.